Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Ayan Oshkosh. I'm your host, Cheryl Hens. Very pleased to welcome to the show uh, tonight um, our brand new school superintendent here in the Oshkosh Area School District, Dr. Brian Davis. So welcome. Thank welcome you. Welcome to Oshkosh. Welcome to Ayan Oshkosh. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I appreciate that. So happy to be here. Thanks yes, for having me. Good. Well, Hopefully it won't be too bad and you'll want to come back again. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> we typically have the school board, um, either someone from the school board or sure. the school superintendent on yeah. about twice a year. Great, And, Excellent. you know, that way we get to hear from the horse's mouth what's really going on. Yeah, appreciate so, that. Anyway, well, so you have only been on the job since, what, July 1st? July 1st is my first day, yes. How's it been going in the last uh, five months? It's, it's been busy. It's yeah. been busy, yeah. But, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's gone really well. So it's, it's been really nice to be able to have kids in person um, and, uh, and just to see our staff, uh, you know, do all of their hard work. Um, one of the things that really attracted me to this job is the talent of our staff. Mm -hmm. um, and to see that in action has been uh, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been good. Okay. Um, how long has it really taken you to get up to speed, or are you still trying? <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's always a work in progress, yeah, um, but yeah. certainly I was able to get out, uh, you know, this summer and get tours of each building from the principals, um, you know, just get up to speed on the referendum work um, that I know has, has uh, was, uh, there's a lot of work with that being done over the summer. Um, yeah, and then being able to meet staff as we're coming back to school, get that kicked off, and then ultimately to be able to meet some kids and yeah. as part of our programming. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it, it'll, it'll continue to unfold. But okay. uh, yeah, it's been good. How large is the staff? The last number that I had was 1,506 total employees. Does yep. that sound about right? That's right. Okay. Correct. And does that include administration as well? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. So you're included in that. Yeah. So um, I did ask for viewer questions, and um, I, I do have some, and this is one of them. Yeah. Um, uh, this person is interested in what you feel. Um, are the strengths in the Oshkosh schools and where there's opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one, I, I think the strength are the people. Um, so we, we've got a, a really strong staff, um, as I mentioned before, and, and I think really committed to, uh, to kids first. Um, and, and that's something that, that I think you can really see in the schools uh, through all of our academic programming, co-curricular programming, and honestly, the support from the community also, I, I think is a really uh, big strength for us as, as we're moving forward. Um, opportunities for growth for us are, are just to continue to, to serve all students. Uh, mm -hmm. We know students learn in a variety of ways, so to continue to evolve our methods and opportunities for all of our kids is uh, you know just we feel a continued opportunity for us to be able to move forward with but again it starts with people it starts with staff and uh, you know that gives us a really strong foundation to uh, extend our our services to all staff, all kids yeah and uh, how many students do you have um, so we're at about um, 90 uh, 9100 okay. yeah about 9118 I think is, is what our uh, uh, count was okay. right, right about there. And that's when you say count, that's the third yeah, Friday Yeah, third Friday numbers? count, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. right about between 91 and 9,200 um, Okay. Students. Why do they call it third, fr I mean, I realize why they call it third Friday numbers because they're taken, the enroll enrollment numbers are taken on that third Friday. Yes. And that is what, and it's the third Friday in September, of course. Yep. And that number is what the state uses to reimburse the district for certain things, correct? correct? Yep, yeah. So our budgeting uh, allocations from the state are driven off of a uh, um, off of our pupil count, essentially. So as we move forward, and it's a three-year rolling average um, to uh, kind of take the edge off any bumps that you'd have in enrollment up or down. Sure. Um, so it's a it's a pretty complicated, convoluted process. Yeah. Um, but the third Friday count is just a time, a snapshot in time, if you will, um, that gives all districts an, an equal chance to be able to uh, do their head counts and be able to report that to the state, um, sure. and then have it have the, those numbers that are used for the levy that needs to be approved by the end of October. Right. So the timing of third Friday. Friday is in sync with when the legally when the levy needs to be approved at the end of October. Sure. So, so based on 9,118 students, what would that? And I I agree, it's a really convoluted process. Leave it to government to you know not make things easy for us. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> but um, what would what does the district get then in money 
when you consider 9,118 students? Yeah, so we, as we would look at it, so our, our total budget overall is about $160 million. Uh, about two-thirds of that is what we'd get from, um, from the state. Um, and then uh, um, the rest of that we get between a combination of the local levy, local te property tax levy, along with federal funding. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so it's about two, it's a, approximately 60, you know, between 60 and 65 percent. From yeah, the boy, I hear something like 160 million and it just boggles my mind, yeah. you know. Um, you were talking, and, and we'll talk more about the budget and that kind of thing, but one thing before we get too far into this, um, you know, you were talking before the show about, you know, coming back to the district. Yeah. You taught here once before. How long Correct. ago was that? Yeah, so back in 1998, um, I, I got uh, my, it was actually my second job. Um, so I spent one year over at New Lisbon School District over in the western part of the state. Then I had an opportunity to, to come back to, uh, or to come to Oshkosh. Uh, my parents grew up in Amro, so coming back to this area was special to me. So, yeah, 1998, had an opportunity to teach and coach at Oshkosh West High School. So um, took took advantage of that, and it was a, just a really great opportunity, really my formative years in education um, for uh, for four years through uh, 2002. So gained a lot of uh, great friendships, um, some of which I've been able to reconnect with um, at this point. Yeah. And, uh, and about every week now, I see a student that I had that, uh, <laughs> you know, is now 35 and 40 years old saying, hey, I remember, I'm like, that's right, yeah. yeah. So that's been really neat to be able to see them in leadership roles in the community. So it makes you feel old at the same time. It does. No, it does. Yeah, it defi definitely, definitely, definitely feels like uh, somewhat of a time warp. But uh, yeah, it, it's yeah. a neat opportunity. It is for me too. When I see, um, you know, former teachers that I've had, and I don't see a lot of them, um, but there, there were a few for me that were very special, and yeah. uh, one, in fact, just passed away. Mm, sorry. To uh, hear. Thank you, uh, like last month, but um, you know, and one served on our city council for a number yeah. of years, and um, you know, I didn't always agree with how she was voting, but I, you know, there are certain teachers that just stand out and you remember certain things about them. Absolutely. And I, I always made sure that she understood, hey, you know, I still remember this, and she was yeah. a music teacher okay. that I had at uh, Tipler uh, Middle School. At yeah. that time, it was just called Tipler Junior High. Sure. But um, I said, I still remember how you taught us to, you know, conduct an orchestra and, and that kind of thing. You know, things that you'll never use, um, probably not. I mean, sure. I don't plan to right, <laughs> go right. conduct an orchestra <laughs> anyplace. Yeah. But I, I, you know, when you watch the 4th of July stuff on TV from like uh, Boston sure. and the half shell or whatever, you know, you can sit there and conduct right along with the orchestra. That's right. So and you can make sense of that experience of what's going on in TV yes. and, and be able to understand I can understand why they're doing what they're doing yeah. and what certain things mean. Yeah, that's and, great. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, certain things, certain teachers just, yeah. they make an impression on you that sticks around for the rest of your life even if you'll never use that exactly it's just a memorable kind of experience absolutely yeah you know? Te teachers are our most valuable resource that we have in our community and we're really blessed to be able to have a really strong really strong staff so uh, yeah i saw something on facebook um, i think it was last week and i'm paraphrasing here because i don't remember the exact slogan but it was pretty short and sweet and basically it said you know teachers don't do it for the income, they do it for the outcome. Yeah. And I thought, wow, you know, that's really profound. And yet, we don't want to shortchange our teachers in pay just because Absolutely. that is why they do it. But yeah. whoever came up with that expression, it was right on the money. It is, uh, definitely. Because teachers really give their all and then some. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's something that I think we all need to recognize, you know, from a, uh, from a society standpoint. Mm -hmm. I, I think teachers have gotten beaten up a little bit. You know, over the a last, little bit. Come on, uh, over the last, <laughs> it's been a lot. Yeah, certainly over the last, you know, a couple of years, and I think you could probably even go back, you know, 10, 10 years. I go uh, back know, as ten years to at Act that. 10. Yeah, you know, and so that's something that I think we really need to keep in check um, and, mm -hmm. and really reinforce the value of our teachers and how we're giving back yeah. um, to them. You know, providing just sure. you know little notes back to your favorite teacher. It goes yeah. a long way for people, and especially as we're really trying to do some work in recruiting people mm -hmm. to become teachers. Um, you know that's difficult work now, and especially when you have a labor shortage across the country. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really we're really at a point now where we we have to be thoughtful, um, and I think change that public yeah. narrative about uh, teachers and the value that they bring. Yeah, what are some of your biggest challenges? And again, I realize you've only been on the job, you know, four or five months here. Yeah. But what have been some of your biggest challenges already? 
and what do you see as your biggest challenges yeah. going forward? Yeah, so I, I think um, certainly from a staffing standpoint, staffing is, is probably one of our biggest um, challenges or like we like to say opportunities, you know, for mm -hmm. us to be able mm -hmm. to, to yeah. solve. Um, and uh, certainly, um, you know, that's that's not felt just in education, that's felt, you know, again, across all industries. But, but yeah. that's that's something that uh, that we're really taking a hard look at. <laughs> One is, you know, how we go out and recruit um, and what that sequence is compared to our competitors. So we're, mm -hmm. we're gonna make some adjustments and be able to get out, out to the field um, sooner. Um, and, and also working closely with the university um, and uh, with the College of Education <clears throat> um, in, in looking at uh, you know, how we can utilize our student teachers um, and really in, in many ways shortening up our program. So not to compromise the quality of our teaching programs, but when we really look at being able to um, create quality educators over their programming, and when you look at a lot of quality educators and quality students that may be looking to go into education or business and they're not really sure, um, when you look at the length of time that a program takes, um, typically a business program is gonna be four years, you get an internship your last semester and you'll roll into a job. Teaching jobs are five years, you do a student teaching for no money your last semester and then you'd roll into a job. If I just run the economics, like on that situation, like that's an archaic process. Like we, sure is, we, yeah. we really need to work with the university system. And I think mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's beyond UW Oshkosh, just certainly yeah. from a border region standpoint, to be able to expedite that process. Um, mm -hmm. And I think also being paid, you know, getting the teacher education process down to a four year process and paying people for student teaching. Like it's yeah. the same as an internship. So that's some sure. of the work that, um, that I'm looking at doing you know, with the university system, okay. along with our legislators as an opportunity to, to grow our workforce. Sure. Why is a teaching program, why is that education process uh, five years as opposed to four years. Yeah, I think over time, you know, as we, we certainly want our, our teachers to have, you know, as many experiences as possible. Sure, yeah. um, and uh, over time, as it was built, um, you know, generally teaching was a profession, you know, originally back in the normal schools, it was a one or two year process um, when we really needed to, to pump teachers out. Um, I think, uh, you know, gender, generally it's been a, a, a female uh, profession, you know, over time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's changed, but also, you know, the, the, uh, the five years was seen as as, as an appropriate amount of time where four years where the men were in business and yeah. you know, we need to get them out and get them get them working because yeah. they had so you know there's there's some gender um, issues gender I think his, inequality inequalities yeah. historically yeah. Um, but uh, we're certainly in a different time so we really I think have to take a hard look at that um, there's some programs I know across the state that also provide that that four-year experience mm -hmm. um, so I think you know there's ways to be able to to work towards that and, yeah. uh, and make a structural change which we will see a difference then in our school systems yeah uh, you know there is is a teacher shortage there's a shortage in almost every profession in fact I was talking to a medical person yesterday who um, said that they are having such a shortage that they are paying people quadruple time mm. and I mean you talk about the cost of health care I mean right. that's that is ginormous I yes. mean quadruple time right um, it's it's nuts yeah but um, you know, when um, I don't know where the teacher shortage falls in comparison to years ago, but I remember when I lived um, back in Texas and there was a teacher shortage then, and we're talking maybe, okay, uh, yes, about 35 years ago or okay. something like that. And there was such a shortage that as long as you had a bachelor's degree, it didn't matter what it was in. It could be in basket weaving. Okay. But if you had a bachelor's degree in something, you could get a job teaching. Hmm. Are we in that dire straits right now? No, I, I, so we're, we're not at that dire straits, I would say. We certainly have created alternative pathways for people that would have um, you know, bachelor's degrees to be able to get their teaching um, degrees. Mm -hmm. We certainly, though, don't want to compromise the quality of you know people's preparation. So, from a right. methodology right. standpoint, in teaching, from a classroom management standpoint, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a difficult profession. So, just to, yeah. to walk into a classroom and really be effective um, is just not going to happen. So, we want to make sure we protect against the the quality, um, sure. you know, erosion that could happen, like in that situation. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but we know that we we need to uh, be able to 
to uh, get more kids in those programs as yeah. we're moving forward and, and still maintain that quality. Yeah, I've got a friend who insists that I should become a uh, substitute teacher, and I said, no, <laughs> no, not I'm not you. going down that road. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. Well, if you change your mind, let me know. We've well, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a degree in basket weaving, uh, but, well, you know, know we, could, <laughs> we could maybe we, find something. We could work something out. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, she, she says, hey, you know, you can sometimes only work half a day, and you get paid great money and I said I it I don't think it's for me <laughs> well that's good to know too yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean I know where my strengths lie and right. maybe in time who sure. knows once I retire maybe I'll <laughs> consider something like that right, but right. so do you see um, other challenges for yourself yeah, I mean, for me, it's really just getting to, to know the community, um, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and again, being being my parents are from Amro, so being from this area, teaching here, yeah. you know, I, I've got a feel for um, you know for the characteristics of of Oshkosh and what it values, uh, which again is one of the reasons why you know that drew me back here. Sure. Uh, but you know, it's it's also a new era, it's a new time, so for me, just to be able to get out and about in the community, um, part of a leadership Oshkosh program mm -hmm. um, that uh, has developed over the last you know couple of decades, which is a great opportunity to be able to learn the history of the of sure. the city but also you know where we're headed uh, yeah. which i think is also really part of the great opportunities that we have yeah. is the redevelopment of Oshkosh and what that looks like over the next 10 to 15 years and how the um, school district can really be partners in that, not only from a workforce development standpoint, but just partners in facilities and, and that type of thing. Sure. So. so we'll talk a little bit about that then, if you would, because, um, you know, when, when you talk about redevelopment, are you talking about like some of the redevelopment we see with um, multi-unit housing going mm -hmm. up and how does that play into um, the school district? Yeah, I think and your goals. I, I, I think you know some some of that is just the vibrancy of, of the city to you mm -hmm. know to kind of rediscover itself. Um, you know, certainly the riverfront you know uh, opportunities coming up, and they provide a great uh, opportunity to be able to keep people in Oshkosh. Um, and certainly, you know, as we have our co-curricular events, football games, basketball games, you know, a lot of those um, types of events that are bringing in thousands of people at time. Sure. You know, I think we can have a, a major contribution to getting people downtown yep. to be able to reinvest in Oshkosh and, and, and part of that exposure. You know, I think that a lot of times there's people coming in that may have an image of what Oshkosh is, but haven't really seen it in the last 20 to 30 years. Yeah. You start bringing people downtown to look at it now, yeah. You know, it's even very different now from when I was here 20 years ago. Sure. In the next 10 to 15 years, it's going to look totally different. So it's really exciting for me. Um, yeah. But I think that's how a partnership, you know, with the, with the district can really uh, um, can play off of some of the synergy at the city level. Yeah. When you when you came back and you looked at Oshkosh, I mean, clearly a lot has changed. It has. And um, even just in the last two years. Yeah. Did you recognize it? Well, I did. I tell you, the the first thing that that was odd to me was all the roundabouts. Oh. I'm like, I keep driving in circles. Like, I, yeah. I was a pre-roundabout person here. Mm -hmm. And so so that took a little bit of adjustment. And I've got my 16-year-old my is, is up here, so I'm teaching her to drive. Oh, boy. And, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. <laughs> so uh, so that's certainly part of part of the difference. But, um, you know, I, I think, you know, seriously, as, as you would look at just some of the downtown plans and, and mm -hmm. along the Riverwalk, um, you know, that looks totally different. The university, yeah. you know, has invested a lot of money and looks, is a beautiful campus. They've done a lot to upgrade that. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's some really neat opportunities. So I, I think um, you know, really, the sky's the limit for where we can go here. And, and sure. again, I think the the partnership with the with the district and the city can be uh, is a really important part of sure. that. When someone is homeschooling a, a child, whether it's one child or all their children, um, do those numbers because they still have to pay taxes Correct. into the school district? Um, but they're but they are homeschooling their children, mm -hmm. or maybe they have them in a different district. Now, if if they're in a different district, then you know, say Nina, Appleton, Fond du mm -hmm. Lac, whatever, they get credit for those numbers, those third Friday numbers, correct? Yeah, and they're, they're, okay. that's part of the equation. Um, yes, so so. Eventually, through the process, then the um, the district that is servicing that child gets the, gets that money. Okay, That's and right. for people who are homeschooling, do they do you get do those numbers count in your third Friday numbers? I would imagine not. Uh, yeah, they don't. No. So you don't get any money from the state for those kids either. Correct. Right? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, it's a okay. head count. All right. Well, at least they're still paying taxes. Yes. Um, 
what are some of the biggest challenges that the district is facing? And they may be some of what you're facing mm -hmm. uh, individually. Yeah, I, I think, it, again, you know, the service to all of our families, um, you know, the demographics uh, of Oshkosh have certainly changed over the last 20 years and even over the last 10 years. So I think uh, just making sure that we have um, enough uh, social emotional support, um, you know, for students that are coming in. Um, and, uh, and certainly, especially now as we're coming out of the pandemic, um, uh, you know, back into in-person learning. Um, what we've noticed is that there's been a lot of um, lot of students that were really in many unstructured environments, kids that may have been getting a lot of services through their typical school day uh, that mm -hmm. hadn't got those services really for, um, you know, a year or two. So, um, so coming back and then coming back into kind of a full school, all the dynamics that the school brings, um, you know, it, it's been somewhat challenging to be able to just get kids back in a routine. Sure. Some of that is building endurance um, yeah. and just being able to, to function in groups and, and do all of that. So, um, so we've really focused our energy on, you know, classroom management, um, you know, making sure that students feel safe, uh, addressing those issues as needed um, to be able to get them back in that, in that rhythm. So that's been something that, uh, and, and I think as I talk to my peers across the state, it's not just in Oshkosh, uh, but that's something that, that uh, all schools are, are working through. So I think those mm -hmm. resources um, now and I think in, in the near future um, are really critical to be able to make sure we get kids back um, to where they need okay. to be. Because if kids yeah. don't feel safe, they're not going to learn to read, they're not going to be able to learn to do math. It's kind of those fundamental, yeah, um, that fundamental absolutely. sense. Um, one of your responsibilities, according to the website, is to do primary outreach with the community. Mm -hmm. So what exactly does that mean and how does it differ from what um, uh, Katie Neiman mm. is is doing as far as you know her job um, her job is um, I think the district's communications director or Correct. something to that effect yeah yeah so how does what you're charged with doing differ mm -hmm. from what she's doing yeah so my role in my role is just the primary contact you know for mm -hmm. for outreach would really just be be able to meet with um, leaders within the community okay. uh, to talk about you know services that can be you know provided that can be shared uh, mm -hmm. opportunities with the university so I've met with the university leaders met with uh, Fox Valley Technical College leaders um, mm -hmm. to, to look at articulation <coughs> agreements that we can have making sure we can if we can get students some college credit before they come to college that saves everybody some money so that's sure. always a good thing yeah. um, and uh, so those those types of direct contacts also meeting with the Chamber of Commerce and attending those events um, getting to know business leaders so we and can doing get the leadership Oshkosh correct thing, yep so. yeah okay. so a lot of, a lot of that is just how can I provide opportunities for our students through mm -hmm. apprenticeships internships uh, university opportunities um, that type of thing and talking okay. programming um, right. Katie's role which is a really important role role for us is around communications and that's really more about telling our story marketing our district sending uh, out press releases sending out press releases yeah, yeah making sure that um, you know that we have that type of, okay. of support as we're as we're moving forward all right so I, I want to throw a scenario out here and I I've heard this from a number of different people over the years you know they have uh, an issue with something that's happening in the district whether it's um, it, it could be a problem with a teacher that a student is having and, and a parent is upset about that. Mm -hmm. it, it could be bullying uh, that's not being addressed. It could be any number of things. But if the parent tries to, you know, work through the, um, the, the level of communication, that tree that is mm -hmm. built, and they don't feel like they are getting, like they're being heard. Sure and they feel like they're just kind of, you know, on a hamster wheel. How open is your door to folks who are in that position? If they're not getting satisfaction, mm -hmm. can they pick up the phone and say, I want to talk to Dr. Davis. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and what I what I have people do then, is, you know, first of all, listen to them, you know, and sure. find out find out what the issue is, uh, but also do that so we can solve the problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever ha that happens to be. Usually, that happens yeah. at the source of the issue. So, again, if it's a if it's an issue in the classroom, you know, how can we help? How can I help them problem solve to work with the teacher, um, to work with the principal, um, and be able to handle that on site? Yeah. Because that that's something that that I want to be able to focus on is getting people back to the source, 
problem solving and just working through. And some people sure. just need that support um, to be able to do that for whatever yeah. reason. And, and I'm more than happy happy to do that. Um, typically, when when that has happened, what I've seen is that we can build a relationship back up at the school with the teacher, the principal level, mm -hmm. and then we can get you know issues. Uh, issues address a lot faster, um, you know, yeah. as they would come up then potentially in the future. Yeah. I mean, I understand how business works, and let's face it, this is a business, even though it's a public sector business and run by taxpayer dollars, basically. Sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, so I know that everybody in business has I'll call them gatekeepers, sure. you know, you know, let's try and because you're a very busy guy, you've got a tremendous amount of responsibility. And so, geez, can we have so and so fix this, um, you know, or maybe so and so can fix this. But I do know that there have been some people over the years who just have felt like their problem was falling on deaf ears mm -hmm. and they were just being given lip service. Yeah. And, you know, if there's anything that would frust frustrate me more than anything sure. is if someone is giving me lip service and I can sure. tell that that's exactly what they're doing and that it's it's not going anywhere. Yeah. So it's nice to know that someone, if they insist on getting to you, mm -hmm. Um, that they can get to you. Yeah, and, and our commitment is, is again to solve problems. You know, in real ways with with people. You know, we know that we've got students and parents. You know, in our schools every yeah. day. So we want to make sure we're getting back to those problems. Now we don't always agree. You know, with what those potential right. solutions yeah. are. Yeah. But working together is a really important process for us as we're as we're moving forward. Well, and and I think along with that um, is the fact that sometimes people don't understand everything that is going on on your end. Sure. You know, in one of my last shows, um, I can't remember if it was the last show or two before that, but I had the city manager on. Mm. Well, people don't always understand everything that makes the city work yeah. and why it's done the way it's done. Sure. And so I think that by having an open door policy and, you know, Working through it that way, I, I think that that can help a parent or a student understand that, okay, this this is why this works, sure. and this is why we do certain things. Yeah, yeah, you know? abs absolutely. So. Yeah, and that's that's important. Okay, wonderful. Um, I, I, I do think that over the years there's been a, a problem with communication. Okay. Uh, between the Oshkosh School, School District and and the and the citizens of this of this community, okay. um, you know, and I think that that problem has been solved greatly since Katie's been hired. Great. I think that you know, in talking to folks, and you'd be amazed how many people call me. Sure. Because they they know that I know certain people, and they know that I have a way. Um, of getting things done. Sure. So they call and they say, hey, Cheryl, you know what? This is my problem and I'm not getting anywhere and what can you do? Sure. And, um, but even for myself, you know, when, when I had Mark Roloff on the show, I don't understand everything about the city and why it works. And it was just, um, it, it was very beneficial to have him explain some of those things. Sure. As you're sort of explaining some things too. Yeah. You know, you have to look at things from both sides. Correct. In Absolutely. order to truly understand it. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, and you really have to listen. And that, that's been one of the things that, that I've yeah. said as a priority, you know, coming in here is, is uh, you know, we really, I have to be able to listen and un, to understand um, and not seek to be understood. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, and I think that's something that uh, sometimes is lacking in some of our dialogues these days. Yeah. Um, so getting back to that, I think is really, really important. Yeah, well, I'm not a fan of Judge Judy, but she she has, I have heard her say over the years, you know, God gave us one mouth and two ears for a reason. <laughs> That's exactly and, right. Yeah. So there you go. My, my grandmother listening. told us that many times. Oh, did she? <laughs> she did, yes. Okay. That was one of her favorite things. So it's not things. something Judge Judy uh, created. <laughs> uh, no, no, but it's wi they're wise words. <laughs> wise yeah, words. They, they are. Um, you know, and, and I think what happened in years past is that, you know, there for a while they had a person who was charged with communicating with the public. Sure. And then during a budget time, they did away with that mm. position. Sure. And so then the district was sort of, I don't know, back to finding its own ways to handle certain communications. Sure. And then they hired another person. And it's sort of been a back and forth kind of thing over the years. Yeah. 
So I, I'm happy to see that Katie is, is here and to know what her job is. And I think she does a really good job. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. I think she, she's a pro um, and I'm really happy to have her on staff. Sure. Um, so let's talk about communication a little bit more because this has to do with district employees. And I have to, I don't have these things memorized, so I have to refer to my notes. Sure. There was an employee service and, and survey. It was an employee survey, and this was prior to you coming here. Uh, sure. So you yep. have no fault in this whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but this survey was conducted in January of this year. It was prompted by um, an anonymous complaint okay. to the board last November. Okay. And um, it, it was, you know, these employees of the 1,106 teachers and staff members um, I'm sorry, of the 1,506 employees, 1,106 responded. Okay. And they said that they do not feel that they are being listened to. Mm -hmm. They feel that the leadership in Oshkosh failed to recognize them, they failed to value their opinion, and they failed to give feedback on their progress throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. And those are some pretty major problems for that you know we're talking 1100 people saying right. i don't feel valued i don't yeah. feel like i'm being listened to mm -hmm. and um I, I think a lot of it had to do with your predecessor um dr vicky cartwright and um but I, I just think that there were some other issues going on as well and to the extent that you're aware of this what sure. can you tell us about what is being done to help those employees who felt like they were just basically being given lip service yeah. at best. Yep, yeah, so part, part of that, part of that from a, the superintendent standpoint from my, is to be present in, in schools. So I, I've got a process that, you know, a quarterly visit to every school. We've got 20 schools, so it takes a yeah. while to be able to get around. Uh, but really making sure that I can check in on a regular basis with, with uh, the principals, to check in with the head custodians, um, because they'll tell you everything, um, which mm -hmm. is a fantastic resource. And custodians know a lot. Uh, they know everything. <laughs> they, they know they everything. They um, do. Which is, uh, yeah, and we've got some great people in those positions. Um, and then to get into classrooms. So really to be able to connect and understand what's going on on the ground, mm -hmm. um, because I can I can hear a lot of things. And you know, in a bigger organization, there's many layers. Sure. Um, so for me to be able to cut through that and, and talk to people that are boots on the ground is really important. So that's something that's a priority for me and will continue to be throughout my time here. Um, you know, the other piece that, that we've taken a look at is feedback from that engagement survey um, is getting that back to principals um, and having principals engage, engage their staffs um, mm -hmm. in their schools and be able to do some problem solving. So in really basic exercise, you know, one of the things that we do is a, a called a plus delta wonderings type of exercise. You know, what's going well for us right now? What are some things that need to be changed and what are some things that you're wondering? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's an exercise that, um, that we've put in place um, over the summer and into the school year that allows our staff members on the fly to be able to give feedback to their principals and principals to be able to respond um, and if we, you know, if we can't change things, you know, let's try to get more support. You know, again, not everything's going to be solved, um, but uh, but it, it's a it's a better opportunity to be able to do that as things come up. Sure. Um, that's one of the things that you know, from my experience, I know, like let's let's talk about things right now and <laughs> let's let's get yeah. it done. Let's nip be it in the bud. Right, because the the longer that things go, um, the worse they're going to get, and sure. the more emotion, um, and and especially when we're in a, such a, a difficult time right now for educators, mm -hmm. um, you know, coming off of the pandemic. And, and just uh, everything that's involved in that. So, um, so we'll continue to be um, to be proactive, um, you know, and, and um, we're going to be able to do engagement surveys uh, twice a year, once in the fall and once in the yeah. spring. Um, and again, th those are those are ways for us just to be able to take the temperature of uh, of how you know employees are feeling, um, mm -hmm. and to be able to stay on top of things as we're moving forward. Yeah, CISA six uh, actually administered that that survey, okay. and they saw it as as a real. Um, I don't want to call it a blessing, but they saw it as a, a really good starting point to kind sure. of restructure, rebuild, yep. and um, regain some of the trust and, um, you know, better morale yes. uh, amongst employees and so forth. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Okay, let's talk money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite subjects because I never <laughs> seem to have enough. Um, but your salary 
is $207,000 a year plus benefits, including a $10,000 moving bonus. And um, I'm assuming that was to get you from where you had been to here. Correct. Yes. Um, totally understandable. Yep. Um, your contract is a two-year agreement. Right. So um, is your salary um, locked in at 207000 for the duration of the two years? Or does this include an increase after year one? Could be a potential increase, yeah. That's something okay. that the board will have to take a look at okay. um, after year one. And, you know, we do annual annual reviews. So, you know, when we get to that point, um, yeah, mm -hmm. it could, could be an increase. Okay. I know that um, your predecessor, Dr. Cartwright, she was at... Um, Two thousand, or I'm sorry, two hundred and four thousand seven hundred seventy dollars. Um, that was for the 2020-2021 uh, uh, school year. Sure. Um, and that also included. Well, I don't know if it included it, but she got uh, $30,518 in fringe benefits. She was, at one time, the highest paid school superintendent in the state. Mm. And then she dropped to the second highest. And even as of the most recent um, Department of Public Instruction database uh, salaries, um, she's still at the second. I would imagine that since your salary is higher than hers uh, when she departed, that you are probably second. How, when I think about that, I mean, I realize that you've got a um, $160 million budget, mm -hmm. which, again, it blows my mind, but, you know, you're the second highest paid superintendent in the state, and yet we are not, I mean, we're a large school district, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think of Milwaukee, Madison, Green Bay being, you know, more populated in the schools than Oshkosh. Correct. So how, yep. how is this salary based? Yeah, so, so that was a, the market analysis. So I, 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 I'm confident that I'm not second. So Milwaukee, okay. Milwaukee and Madison and Green Bay I know are, are ahead of that. Sometimes those DPI numbers lag just in the, in the reporting as, okay. as they go. All not right. exactly sure what the ranking is, but I know those three for a fact are, are, uh, are above. So maybe fourth. I'll go check it out. Yes, <laughs> but, may, but maybe fourth. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's certainly um, that's, it's part, of, part of the market. Um, you know, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's where, um, you know, superintendents, you know, for our size of district, again, as soon as you go to two high schools, you know, the complexity of the system, you know, mm -hmm. increases, the size increases yeah. um, as, you, uh, as you move forward. Yeah, and, and is it based at all on the size of the district, you know, the number of pupils? Yeah, that are I, enrolled. I mean, or? I think that's a factor. You know, mm -hmm. again, to a point, there's certainly a difference between you know having a thousand students and ten thousand students. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, as as you would go, and again, the the complexities of, of twenty what twenty schools bring, um, you know, two high schools and, and all of those dynamics. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so certainly that's a factor. I think if you if you do a ranking, you know, according to school population and um, you know and superintendent salaries, I think you'd see some correlation there. Sure. Um, you sure. know, within within reason. Yeah. And yet, you know, I, I look at the total budget of the district, I look at your salary, and yet, you know, our teachers, I just think, are grossly underpaid. Um, I don't know about other districts, but I think teachers in general are underpaid. Um, and, you know, when we talked earlier about, you know, a couple of years ago or whatever, sure. and I made reference to Act 10, um, were you teaching in the state during Act 10 when so, it became law? Act 10 was actually my f the first year I was a superintendent. Oh, um, boy. So uh, of uh, <laughs> baptism by fire, certainly. Indeed. So Indeed. I was down in uh, Columbus, Wisconsin, so just north of, uh, of Sun Prairie and Madison, okay. Madison area. Um, yeah, so my first, uh, my first year as a superintendent. Um, uh, yeah, very, very interesting times. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, and that's been, uh, it's been an interesting journey since then. Mm -hmm. I, I think the one thing that... Um, you know, we had hoped would follow, um, you know, a, a uh, loosening maybe of, of regulations and, and negotiation type of thing happened. would be money. 
um, right, and, and for for the uh, the state to uh, you know continue to have revenue caps and, and to continue not to have you know increases like this year, for example, we have no no increase to the revenue limit caps. We have no increase to per pupil. Um, you know, we don't have that. So if you if you don't have that and you don't you're not able to keep up with the cost of living, um, you know, it's difficult then to be able to really make too many structural changes as we yeah. move forward. Yeah. Well, and and for folks who are unaware of what Act 10 is, I I will just. Um, kind of tell you, I, I don't know how it came up, how, who came up with the name Act 10, but it was um, highly controversial, highly politicized, um, led by then Governor Walker, Scott Walker, and his Republican cronies, and they pushed this thing through, and essentially Act 10 limited the bargaining that public sector unions could do to only that of wages and wage increases, and the increases were capped at the rate of inflation, not necessarily the cost of living, and they are right. two different things. Yeah. Um, and so basically it prevented any kind of meaningful wage increase. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you think about unions, um, being able to collectively bargain is, is one of the main things with unions. Right. And if you aren't able to do that, then you know, what's the point of being in a union? And I'm assuming that, and maybe, please correct me if I'm wrong, you as a superintendent, you're in a different category than the teachers are, correct? Correct, that's okay. right. Do you yeah. have a union? Um, we do, yes, okay. yeah. And so, and we, you know, it, it's a priority for myself and our administration to ha still have a, a, a good relationship um, with our teachers union. Yeah. Uh, we meet on a monthly basis. Uh, we'll continue to do that. That relationship is really important. Um, yeah. A lot of that comes down to problem solving, being able to be responsive to employees as, as we hear things. Again, yeah. we're not gonna always agree on solutions, but yeah. being able to keep that relationship and that dialogue has been critical for me and my three superintendencies and that's not going to change here. Yeah and I mean and yet we lost so many really good teachers yeah. here in Wisconsin. They either they got fed up with this district and went to another district or right. I think mostly they left the state altogether and went to neighboring states or whatever where they didn't have this Act 10 thing hanging over their heads. Sure. And so, you know, you talk about the talent pool. It was, it was I think, pretty significantly depleted yeah. with, with the passage of Act 10. And frankly, I don't see it ever being repealed um, I think we're stuck with it. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I would agree. And again, that's why I think it's important to maintain those relationships and be able to work and problem solve together and structurally look at ways for us to, to grow our workforce, to change the, the narrative about public education, public yeah. educators, yeah, um, and sure. uh, making, making sure that we're getting back to holding them up to the people that they are, you know, heroes mm -hmm. within, within our community that we remember yeah. 30 years from now uh, as somebody that made a difference for us, whether it's, you know, giving some context to how the Boston Orchestra is is conducted um, <laughs> or just you know simple things like just the love enjoying the love of reading right mm -hmm. and creating that like really fundamental things that teachers do so yeah. um, that's really yeah. important for us as we're as we're moving forward yeah what what can you do oh, I just lost my microphone let's get a shot of uh, <laughs> uh, not of me picking up my microphone on the floor uh, there it is all right <laughs> all twisted also very much mangled okay getting it back on and hopefully that will be that okay wow that's uh, that's not happened all that often <laughs> all right so um, I, I think what I was about to ask is how you know because since the wages and salaries are capped mm -hmm. what else can you do because I would think that's a kind of a major job for you, yeah. um, a struggle, if you will, to figure out how to make these educators feel like they're important and right. that they're being listened to and, you know, give them some self, uh, some sense of self-worth yeah. when you can't do anything else 
monetarily. Yeah, and certainly yeah. we, we want to make sure you know we're we're as competitive as we can be from a from a salary standpoint, and mm -hmm. we'll we'll continue to work towards that. But there are you know there certainly are limits. That's where it really becomes I, I think a culture you know a cultural yeah. aspect, yeah. Um, and and making sure that people feel heard, um, feel like they're respected, making sure that we're on the same page as we're making mm -hmm. big decisions. You know sure. whether it's COVID or whether it's you know some other uh, other issues that come up. Being able to work together is really important, and I think especially being conscientious of that in a larger district where sometimes it feels, because of the, the number of schools that we have, and uh, sometimes it feels like we're in uh, separate worlds. Um, so being able to really shrink, um, you know, I think shrink the system and, and have that communication to me is really is a really important uh, priority for us as we move forward because okay. generally people, uh, it's certainly as long as the salary is competitive, generally people don't leave jobs because of the money, it's because of the culture, it's because of who they can be and how they can grow within the system. Mm -hmm. So those are also things that we continue to look at through our professional development opportunities and such things. Okay, great. Um, I want to make sure that I get this. Um, I've gotten to just about all of my viewer questions, but I have one left here, and I want to get to it before we run out of time because I think we're down to about probably 13 minutes, which is amazing to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the time has just flown. Sure. Um, but their question is this. The past couple years, a program has been offered to high school juniors, allowing them the opportunity to finish their learning and graduate with a program through Oshkosh, they say Oshkosh Truck, it's actually mm -hmm. Oshkosh Corp. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell that that's probably a townie because they said Oshkosh Truck. <laughs> um, and they said, I thought this was such a brilliant and forward-thinking concept. I would love to know if there is any intention or are any discussions in the works to expand this idea to give our young adults a leg up in an industry they are already passionate about such as utilizing the experience of our Oshkosh area business owners yeah. and field experts, re restaurateurs, banking, farming, um, nursing within the medical field, entrepreneurship, technology, um, perhaps teaching, yeah. and government and politics. So basically kind of an internship program, I think is what they're asking about. Yeah, I think that's a great question and, and comments and direction. And, and certainly that's something we want to continue to strengthen. Uh, we have career pathways that we're working through at the high school and that provides these opportunities for kids to do some okay. career exploration, but then also lines up classes that where they can get some of this experience. Um, and some of those do end up as uh, part of internships and apprenticeships at places like Oshkosh Corp or other you know local organizations. We're looking to to expand that base. So mm -hmm. anybody out there that's interested in, in having internships or apprenticeships, feel free to give me a call. Um, I can hook you up with some of our coordinators. But we've got some really good examples of, of students um, that have come right out of high school as some of these apprenticeships, been able to not only you know do their do their work at Oshkosh Corp, but also get their you know two year or four year degrees, and are really coming out of uh, some training with no debt um, mm -hmm. and getting some significant you know opportunities for or full-time salaries, benefits, um, you know, and, and these kids are, you know, 21, 22 years old by the time yeah. you get through your journey. It, there's really good opportunities here in Oshkosh. Um, and uh, and I know we, I've talked to business leaders that are interested in, in uh, expanding that. So um, I would assume you're also um, in contact with the technical college also yes. because, you know, everybody doesn't want to go the route of going to college and getting a four or five year degree. They may want to become a plumber or Absolutely. an electrician and in many cases those folks are making more than people with you know college degrees. Um, those, those are and, great opportunities. And we yes. need those people. We ab we absolutely do. Yeah, like I said, like I did, if my sink's broken, my kitchen's flooding, I do not need to call my doctor. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I need to call a plumber. That's right. I need them here now. Yep, um, and yep. I'm going to pay what I need to pay to get that done. Yeah. Um, and so those are the opportunities. We absolutely need, you know, people in, in all of the trades professions. And we want to be able to build that because the four-year university experience is not for every student. And why spend time? Yeah. There's a lot of kids that do spend time and spend tuition money for four years and then get out and aren't sure what to do with it. Um, so yeah. we, we yeah. want to make sure that's the, the idea of the pathways is to provide kids as much experience as we can in different fields so they can kind of kick the tires on it. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is knowing what you don't want to do. Yeah. So I can do an apprenticeship and like this is awful. Like yeah. I, now I want to go to college because I thought I might want to do that. Yeah. There's great value in that and that, that cuts both ways. So, so really trying to build those partnerships. And for me that's one of the 
really attractive things about being the superintendent in Oshkosh with the technical college in town, with the university in town, and with some great business leaders who are willing to take students on, which is not an easy task. You know, that takes a lot of obligation from yeah. the businesses. Um, but I think the partnership, especially in this workforce, um, you know, with, with, uh, with a lot of scarcity in the workforce is going to be really important for us as we move forward. Okay. Excellent. Um, the district's max, uh, mask policy <laughs> has been extremely controversial, and um, it has been so much that we made state news, and um, one of my crew members actually told me that she saw it on national news, yeah. where a few weeks, uh, well, a few months ago, I think, um, the, you know, there's a mask policy, yeah. and people have to wear masks. Uh, within the district and some of the parents came and they created an uproar. They didn't want to wear masks. Um, the school board adjourned its meeting uh, to another day in time. And, uh, you know, that, that just puts such a blemish mm -hmm. on the face of the Oshkosh Area School District. And I think Oshkosh in general, really. Um, but, you know, parents do have the option of homeschooling if they don't want their kids to go to school and have to wear a mask. Sure. I mean, they, they can exercise that right if they choose to. But right now, what is the mask policy? Uh, who does it apply to? Mm. And where do you get data from in which to make that decision? Yeah. So, um, so right now our mask um, policy is uh, anyone who's in a, in a Oshkosh Area School District facility um, needs to have a, a mask face covering um, is required um, for indoor, indoor facilities. Um, and that goes through uh, December 3rd. So we just extended okay. that. Um, right. uh, and that's consistent with what the city has done. Um, I think there's through the end of November. So ours is just today, so far. Th that Friday, yeah, at this point. Yeah. Um, so our process has been going month to month. Um, we work closely with the Winnebago County Health Department. Okay. So that's where we get, that's our data source um, and where we get our recommendations from as we're, as we're moving forward. Um, we're also in collaboration with our uh, Fox Valley area school districts um, mm -hmm. to see what everybody else is doing, sure. um, see what their numbers are. There's certainly different philosophies and, and ways to go about it at different, yeah. different districts. Uh, but uh, at this point, we, we feel it's been successful for us when, especially when we're at a really high, uh, critically high burden level, um, you know, we've been able to have have, you know, in-person instruction has been our priority. Mm -hmm. um, and if we need to, to wear a mask like for that, like that's much better than going virtual. So we, we've had experiences, yeah. you know, at this point with the number of classrooms that we have on a daily basis, we've only had four classrooms that have needed to go virtual for a week because we've had some, okay. some classroom spread. Some exposure. And yeah, stuff. and we've okay. had several classrooms at the same time that have had maybe one or two cases and we've tested the rest of the students in the classroom mm -hmm. and they haven't had it and we've been able to stay mm -hmm. in, in person. So we've been much more surgical about our approach and not have it be the entire district or the entire school but yeah. really kind of confining um, to specific cases so that's been helpful we'll continue to take that approach as we um, as we move forward so um, yeah. now we, we also believe that one of the um, uh, one of the off ramps for us is going to be for vaccination. So the opportunity for our yeah. five through 11 year olds with that just being approved this week. Um, and, and we're uh, working closely with the Winnebago County Health Department for some school uh, school sites where um, any Oshkosh area school district family can come and get their child vaccinated. Um, one at Oaklawn Elementary coming up and then one at Jacob Shapiro coming up. So, okay. um, so as those students have access to the vaccination um, and go through their you know, six week process to full vaccination after two shots, um, we really think that's going to be um, helpful and can provide us with an off ramp uh, from wearing masks and then go mask optional and just watch the environment as we go. But that'll, yeah. that'll probably be, uh, you know, we'll monitor it month to month, so we'll see where we are at the end of, uh, end of November, beginning of December. Uh, but once yeah. we get to the new year, um, you know, and we've had, everybody has at least access to the vaccination, whether you want to get the shot, that's a personal choice. Sure. Um, but, uh, but we believe that'll make a difference for our numbers and we'll continue to monitor that. Okay. Well, I, I think that's that's wonderful because you know people of course we all have rights in this country um, and and thank God that we do but at the end of the day you know when there is a health epidemic as this has been and there are so many unknowns still about mm -hmm. it and about the variants that are out there I we just have to work together and be patient with each other and if there's a rule in place somewhere, again, we may not agree with it, 
but it is the rule. And if you don't like the rule, then don't go to that store. Keep your kids home and homeschool them. You can't just keep them home and not do anything, but right. you know, you've got choices. Sure. Yeah. And um, you know, certainly the school district in the city aren't the only ones that Correct. have these policies in place. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's it's shown that where these mask policies and mandates are in place, their numbers are lower. Yeah. yeah. So people just need to be patient, be understanding, yeah. and and cooperate. And this will go away a lot faster. Absolutely. Yeah. And and we're yeah. looking forward to that time again. You know, there's uh, there's definitely a, an opportunity for us. I think once we get to the new year, to be able to uh, to move forward from that. Great. There are so many things, <laughs> so many things I still wanted to talk to you about, but we're down to five minutes, which means about four and a half minutes, really. So um, we want to talk for sure about what's happening with the referendum that was passed by the voters in Oshkosh last November. Yes. And so that was for a couple of different things. Um, it was to renew 7.95 million in annual operating funds that was previously approved by the community in both 24, uh, 2014 and 2016 with no tax increase. And then it also was to invest $107 million in capital funds to advance the first phase of our long-range facilities plan by building a new middle school and a new elementary school and then closing some aging and outdated structures and and so on and so forth. Let's right. talk in our remaining probably three and a half minutes sure. about um, you know where we're at yeah. with building these places. Yeah, so we've got some exciting opportunities um, coming up. Um, so the, the new Northside Middle School um, will uh, be breaking ground uh, probably late uh, late winter, early early spring here. We're almost done with the design process. Uh, in the process of getting a, uh, a survey out to the community about naming um, that new middle school. So that'll be uh, that'll be neat to be able to uh, to have that recognition. Um, no, but, I'm sorry to interrupt, but will yes. that go to everyone in the city or just people who have children in the district. No, we'll we'll get it out citywide. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. So we'll All be right. we'll be able to, to okay. anybody would have an opportunity to, okay. to be able to do that. So that'll be coming up. Because I don't have kids um, in the district, so, but I pay taxes. You, yeah, yeah, and, you, <laughs> and you've got opinions. So so let, let, let's get those. So we'll get, we'll uh, we'll make sure we get that okay. out. Okay. Um, yeah. So so uh, so that's exciting. Um, I would say from a taxpayer standpoint, one of the advantages for us in this market has been low interest rates. Um, so we were able to lock the uh, the bond into a low interest rate and be able, be able to uh, uh, save taxpayer money over period of time you know over the the 20 year borrow so that'll be helpful also uh, but we're really excited about the new opportunity for a, for a new school um, so that'll be for our Merrill middle school students and our Webster Stanley middle school students will be coming together at one that will that school will open in September of 23 2023. Um, so uh, we're uh, about a year and a half out from that point in time. Um, and then uh, the second part of that referendum then, as you had mentioned, was the new elementary school. Um, and that'll be on the Webster Stanley um, current school site. So we'll have uh, some restructuring to be able to do and some movement. Uh, but really I, excited about the opportunities um, to, uh, to refresh um, some of our schools and, uh, and really make um, our, our north side schools the, uh, uh, some top-notch places to go. Sure. So which are the schools that are closing then? Yeah, so we're looking at, uh, um, so the elementary schools, uh, well, so Merrill, Merrill Elementary School, and we're mm -hmm. looking at Washington uh, okay. Elementary School um, as, we're, as we're moving forward into those, uh, into those spaces okay. um, as we would go. And certainly, you know, Merrill Middle School, that would just be rebuilt on that same, on that same site. Okay. So. All right. Excellent. Well, we've got a little extra time here. Uh, and, and by the way, folks can go on, um, I never really know which camera to look at here. I think this is one. Uh, but uh, folks can go on the Oshkosh Area School District's website. And um, I've got some pictures, but they're too small to really show them on camera. But, um, you know, if you click on the uh, referendum tab and then you go to October 20, well, it's it was just updated a couple days ago, I think. Yeah. But it's just the report for October of 2021. Um, you can see some really beautiful pictures of what your taxpayer dollars are, are being spent on. So um, I, I think it's wonderful. I'm thank not you. sure how much time I have left here. So I think I'm just going to say thank you because yeah. um, I, I think that they want me to wrap up. 
So, but thank Sounds you so great. much for being here. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I hope um, you didn't think I was too tough on you. I uh, no, no, <laughs> no. I thought I thought it was thought it was good. So I, we just really appreciate the the coverage and, and the questions. And sure. uh, yeah, I'm happy to come back whenever you whenever great. you want us. Great. I'm going to hold you to that. Excellent. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so very good. So um, again, go to the Oshkosh Area School District's website to check out the building of the referendum schools, um, anything at all, it's it's all there and it's an easy, I think, to follow website. Great. Thank so, you. so thank you to um, Dr. Brian Davis for being here. Thanks to my crew and as always, thanks to you. We will see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh. <laughs>